Hi guys, this is Dana from CFRE Radio 91.9. I am here today with Montreal's very own Ivy Tide. Hi guys, how are you? Hello. Hey. Thank you so we much in- for having us. No problem. It's a pleasure to have you guys, especially like you guys are very like up and coming. You guys are rising stars. I can see that. Just Thank for you. anyone who's just now hearing of you, tell us about Ivy Tide. Who is Ivy Tide? What do you guys do? We're just we're just three dudes from Montreal. Make some music together. Grew up grew up kind of in the suburbs of Montreal, all liking kind of the same style of music. Uh, and after kind of like bumping into each other at a recording studio, Jimmy and I sort of developed uh, a chemistry in working together on songs. And uh, he he kind of like reached out to Kyle, who was uh, also kind of shared that that same uh, interest. And we came together and formed this uh, this band called Ivy Tide. And so it was you and. Jamie and then how did Kyle get into the picture as well did you guys know each other beforehand well I knew Jamie for uh, a good couple of years we were in a band previously a punk rock band it was really fun we were really bad <laughs> 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 and um, when they were looking for a bassist um, to get things rolling the, uh, Jamie reached out to me and I, I joined up and it was really great so we kept it going that's a really nice origin story especially like since yeah. you previously had a history in music just I'm kind of curious how did you transition from punk rock to <laughs> indie slow beat how did that um, happen just different opportunities I mean we were, we were younger um we just I don't really know what it was it was just it was something that we could try and try and make something out of and uh, one of our friends who called Ben back in the day, he had the idea of starting a punk band. So we got into that and then eventually it, uh, it ended. And then we all went on with life and did some stuff. And Jamie started a recording studio and uh, that's where he met Nathan. And then from there, you know, Ivy Tide chapter kind of took off. That's pretty that. cool. Yeah. That was so- beautiful. Oh, that was so nice. <laughs> yeah, the way the metaphor of like you guys oh, just met at a crossroads. Yeah. <laughs> so oh, it was, <laughs> yeah. So it was like a mutual sort of um, agreement for you guys to turn into like an indie kind of vibe. Like you Honestly, wanted to have that sort of we're aesthetic. We're still kind of figuring out what we are, you know. Yeah. We're never, yeah. we haven't figured out our sound and we, I think we would never will. I think we're always going to be kind of experimenting in different uh, avenues. Like, I I think some of the kind of like current indie stuff has a lot of like punk-ish influences, but it also has a lot of hip hop influences. It has a lot of like, it draws from so many different kind of like uh, genres that we like to just put all of that together and see what comes out of it. Yeah. Do you think, yeah, do you think it's like, a challenge in any sort of way to kind of like mix all these genres together in like one sound that is your own yeah it's not so easy for sure um but i I think what like the way we kind of go about it is by writing songs with different kinds of feelings and like one song might be a bit more chill and it'll pull on maybe more like r&b style or like hip-hop style elements but then we'll write uh but then we'll throw in like some like heavy distorted guitars in there to like bring us like some like unique tinge to it from like like a more like like a heavier more like grungy sound and then in our like more upbeat stuff that we've been working on um that might have a bit more of like an indie pop indie rock kind of vibe we'll bring in maybe some like hip-hop style drums um and r&b kind of synths so yeah it's like usually you can tell like what the main kind of like genres we're pulling from, but we're usually yeah taking from everything at the same time. It just like it's all weighted kind of differently. If that makes sense. Um, so you guys kind of just orbit around that one central theme of like, especially it seems really popular nowadays with like Claro, Billie Eilish's like kind mm. of new sort of sound. 
what else sort of inspires you guys? Do you, is it music that you already listen to or is it just sort of what you feel fits each of you best? I think it's, yeah. That was a good, that was a good one. Claro, for sure. We love Claro. Oh yeah. Claro, absolutely. Um, I think it's a combo of like inspirations and kind of like what we're feeling while we're writing the song. Like if it's a super kind of like deep, lyrically deep song, then we're gonna, it's gonna be kind of more, the instrumentation is gonna wanna like fit that as best as possible. But if it's if it's kind of a happier, more a beat vibe, then also it's gonna take a different kind of like direction. So it's a mixture of how we're feeling kind of like when we're writing the song, but also what we're, who we're drawing inspiration from. So Claro, uh, Still Woozy, um, there's a guy in Toronto called Versace, who is also one of our favorite artists. Really? Speaking of uh, Lyrically Deep, you guys just released a new single in February of this year. It is called Talk About It. And you guys said it talks about how, um, especially like nowadays with lockdown, the difficulties in like maintaining relationships and keeping in touch with your loved ones. Could you tell us more about that? I mean, obviously we know the inspiration for it. Lockdown's mm -hmm. been really hard on us all, especially Canada. Um, so what provoked you guys to write it now, almost a year after COVID? It, it was actually, it was written kind of like in a, a pretty heavy lockdown period. Um, it just kind of like made it, made its way out to the public a bit later. Uh, so it, it really drew inspiration from like, not being able to kind of like see the people that you care about and wishing that things could all be better if you could just meet up and talk about it and not being able to kind of like express your feelings through like a screen as well as you could just kind of like in person. Um, yeah, it was kind of like, so it was written while lockdown was kind of like intense and that's why that like, it draws inspiration from from kind of like that period. Oh, I can, you can kind of see based on like your Spotify, like sort of, I was looking through the artist, like your releases and stuff. You guys released about like five singles during 2020. So would you say that that sort of COVID gave you sort of like a, like an advantage in the songwriting process because you had a lot of time to like, reflect on life experiences and stuff or was that something completely unrelated and just coincidentally happened to be the year that you <laughs> released a lot of music i think it's more so um we didn't have other factors such as uh, practicing for live shows and um prepping for uh let's say um uh, live appearances you know i think that is really weighted when the world is in a regular like flow like without a pandemic you know <laughs> when you have shows going on you're trying to fit in practices you're still trying to get together you're still trying to make progress on demos that you may have in the bank um but with lockdown um first meeting up was something that we we had to really wait out and and make happen after you know like the first march lockdown happened we were just doing a lot of stuff online. Um, so after there was a bit of a lift in summer, we were able to, to meet up and, and make some progress on certain things. But it, you know, the live component was completely removed. So we had a lot of time to sit and, and work on songs or like if Nate or Jamie brought something to the table, we'd be able to sit down and, and crack down and work on it. And let's say, well, um, some of the guys are working on the songs. We could have other people working on artwork or working on videos or creating content around the music that was going to come out. So there was a lot of downtime for live components um, and gave us a lot of time to work on stuff in-house. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we kind of shifted our approach uh, a little bit more to kind of keep the productivity at a, at a maximum, even though our resources are kind of limited. So we had to kind of like devote more to songwriting and more yeah. to kind of like video production and stuff like that, which and in it, the end was a good thing. 
Yeah, I've actually witnessed that firsthand. From what I'm seeing, you guys have been sort of blowing up on uh, social media. Like I, that's how I discovered you guys. I found you guys on TikTok and you have around 10,000 likes on there, if I'm not mistaken. And you guys even opened a Discord server so that you can interact with your fans hands-on. And I find that really nice and also like sort of like refreshing to see a new approach on how you know you interact with your friends so For sure, yeah. yeah we always wanted to have kind of like a more an easier way to kind of like just talk with our with our friends and our fans and like we found that the best way to do that would just to put everyone in one place and kind of like uh have it open access and you can you can kind of talk to us directly there rather than just seeing a post and you know it's a bit more engaging when when you can have a conversation with uh with your fans yeah it's really nice too um a lot of people in the server have started to build friendships among each other too and it's become a place where people are comfortable like taking a break from studying or from life in general they come and they like share music together or they'll, they'll share their art that they're working on independently. And it's a nice creative hub. And it, we just, you know, we're happy to have, have brought it together into fruition. And um, I know there's a lot of YouTube accounts that I used to go on when I was still in school and studying. They were mostly lo-fi channels. Um, and there were these live chats that you can go into. And it was basically like group therapy for people who are just going through some shit. And it was really nice because this Discord server has that sort of feeling to it. You know, it's mm -hmm. it's a safe place and it's a welcoming place. Yeah. Do you think this is the future of the music industry? Like a uh, shift from sort of like in-person interactions to more social media based platforms? You know, this is, is this, do you think this is a new way for bands to sort of grow through social media interacting with people and building friendships through that i think so and part of me does hope so too because it it really creates um a nice social circle and um it allows us to also um share with fans you know what inspires us and and give shout outs to people who we take a lot of influence from too mm -hmm. so it's very organic in the way that art is shared and experienced and I think it's a great thing, you know. Yeah, the topic of social media also, it makes me curious about one thing. So you guys have a sort of significant age difference between you guys. For example, Jamie, I believe you are studying for your PhD at the moment, right? Yeah. How do you and, know that? That's crazy. <laughs> and Nathan, you are in your undergrad. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. like, and Nathan, you're in your, in your undergrad, right? Yeah. So that puts you guys in two very different, and Kyle, you're sort of in the middle. Um, so that puts you in a very like different like level of knowledge of the world, how it works, especially like how the music industry works, because a lot of us feel like the music industry has changed a lot lately. Mm. So how do you feel like based on you guys' different sets of life experiences and stuff like that, how do you think you work together so well to navigate the music industry i think i think regardless of age whether or not i'm ancient or not compared to <laughs> ancient, you're not I ancient. Mean, <laughs> i mean wait they, you're 22 23 23 now 23, okay so there's like a three-year difference 20, so <laughs> you're 20 okay yeah so i'm 26 so there's a three-year gap between eight and i but i do feel like I don't know. I've always had friends, sometimes that were younger, sometimes that were older, sometimes the same age. But I feel like usually you work well with people that are similar to you in like certain ways. So yeah, regardless of our massive age gap, uh, <laughs> and like maybe it's because he helps me carry my cane around. I don't know. But <laughs> either way, yeah, I think I think we are like I think we are like all similar people. <laughs> we think similarly. Uh, we like enjoy the same kinds of stuff. We like talking about the same kind of stuff. And obviously all of our music tastes like overlap a bunch and these guys always are showing me awesome new stuff. So yeah, I think that's. Yeah. We never, we never questioned it because it kind of just came together so well that it's True. never even been a thought kind of that we're like, 
in two different places because we're kind of going through this music thing together and it's both of our first time going through it kind of like at at this level so we're we're both experiencing things for the first time together yeah i was i was actually shocked to be honest when i found out like oh one one guy's in his undergrad and one's doing his phd i was like i had no idea because you guys seem to just work so well together Mm. you know because like the whole you know your social media like how you guys interact with your fans how you create music how you put it out how you promote it like it just feels really seamless Mm. Which is a really homies. good thing. We're just like really close homies. Buds for life. <laughs> <laughs> Best buds. You have matching necklaces. <laughs> um, and I just wanted to also, you know, give a shout out to Nathan because I was like, it was him I saw on TikTok first. I Ooh. I kind of like stalked you guys. I'm sorry. <laughs> Your interviewer no, no. is a stalker. Um, <laughs> I saw you are actually posting a lot of like the songwriting process and everything. You just posted a TikTok a couple days ago about a song you were looking to release. Hint, hint. Ooh. Ooh. Oh. <laughs> Editor, insert dramatic music. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So how do you feel like that sets you apart from other bands to, you know, bringing, bringing the fans into the whole process? Well, I think it's important to kind of like uh, just connect with people whenever you get the chance to do so. And TikTok, for example, is a great uh, place to do that because you can, it's just like a bunch of people just like posting about their lives and seeing if it, if people can relate. And our songs, a lot of the time, what we write about, it's like stuff that other people also go through. So just by kind of like putting yourself out there and saying like, oh, hey, I wrote a song about this, um, maybe it'll hit someone and someone else will kind of be able to relate to it. And uh, that's how, that's, I find that's the best way to draw in like any fan is just if it, if the music can like connect on a personal level. Um, So like, is your songwriting process, is that sort of collaborative? Or is it something you guys bring individually to the table and then you tend to work on it together as a team? It's like a, it's a mixture of kind of like everything. We, uh, some songs will start from scratch, like just like we're three dudes in the studio. We want to make a new song. Let's just see what comes out of it. Some other songs will start with one of us having kind of like a voice memo demo like recorded on our phones of, of an idea uh, that we'll send to the rest of the guys. And and if we we all dig it, then we kind of like go and develop that idea further together. Um, but every song has kind of like it's different. It's different route. Yeah. Like, for example, your song you released last year, Undone, seems to have worked pretty well in that case because you hit a million streams. Congrats, by the way, a million. (laughs) Like that's actually huge. And you guys currently have almost 130,000 monthly listeners. Mm -hmm. What are your feelings about that? Like if you could tell anything to your 2018 selves, what what were your expectations? Like, did you expect to, like big props to growing so fast? Like that's actually insane. Thank you. Thank you for that, yeah. Jamie, um, you want to comment on on our <laughs> your expectations of the music industry, like how you what would we managed tell our old to? Selves? Oh my God, I don't know. Give any ideas, Kyle? I don't know. <laughs> um, yeah, that's a good question, especially because we're all stumped. So you know, it's a good. Question. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I'm gonna pat myself on the back for that. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah, I def I definitely think we never expected to have to grow so quickly and to kind of like be able to connect with so many people uh, as we did. Um, But we're super thankful to anyone who's ever kind of like listened to our music or has shared it. Um, Like we're just, we're just putting out songs that, that we kind of like write as we go along and we putting yourself out there is always kind of like you're making yourself a little bit more vulnerable, but uh, sometimes, sometimes it uh, it pays off, and other people kind of like relate to that. So, yeah, yeah. To, to expand on that too, like I think um, 
every time you you complete or you like listen to a song that you think is is fairly done with you're really excited because you think to yourself oh this song could really take off you know like let's hope this song pops off and then when the thing with undone happened the numbers that we started getting it's sort of surreal right like you always imagine like oh one day that could happen and then you get numbers like that you know a million streams you look around and you're like whoa that's how fast it can happen mm. <laughs> you know and it's yeah, really, especially really gratifying you know yeah especially with the age of the internet like you have no idea what's gonna yeah. blow up or not and 100%. you guys yeah, and you guys are pretty young, including you, Jamie. Don't worry. You guys are, you guys are young. See, <laughs> you guys are young, so I feel like you have a added advantage of like knowing how to navigate the world of the internet. We're trying. We're trying our best. We're trying to keep yeah, up with like all of the uh... all the clout. <laughs> <laughs> clout is a disease. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, um, as someone who's born in two thousand you guys are actually doing really well in terms of how you interact. It's actually, it's certainly different. Well, thank you. Cool. We appreciate that for sure. Yeah. yeah. I'll, I'll just say too, like obviously the streaming numbers and all that stuff's awesome. And like, that's what we hope for always. But I feel like something that's, that for me was like unexpected because you're so focused on like the stats and you like hope that like people at Spotify or Apple music, just like, like the track <laughs> want to like support you. But like what, came from that and like what has come from like our social media kind of stuff has like actually having like real fans and then now mm -hmm. having like a community where like they talk and we can like meet them and there's people who like are excited when we're going to release a song like to me that's the best thing that came out of that like that's so crazy yeah that's that's yeah. ridiculous yeah. yeah it's gonna be pretty crazy once like since the vast majority of your growth happened during lockdown once you guys start releasing, start showing up for more live shows and stuff, mm. it's it's probably going to be a shocker when you have way more people that show up, you know? Yo, yeah, I'm telling you, the first show back, first show back is going to be uh, <laughs> going to be wild. Yeah. Speaking of the future, what can your fans expect from you in the near future? Well, we hope live shows. <laughs> <laughs> I think we all hope live shows. Yeah. Yeah. Any music uh, projects? Nate, what do we have coming up? <laughs> we might just have a brand new something, something very, very soon. Jamie, do you want to tease more? I think we can say the date. It's pretty soon, right? <laughs> sure, sure. So May 13th, we're dropping a, a single. A new single, yeah. So That's really soon. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so we'll... Uh, you guys are the first to know. You hear to hear first. <laughs> I'm writing it down currently. We're gonna blast it on all our, on all of our really small headlines. We're a small station, but we're gonna do it. Yeah. I am honored that you guys let me know that. For sure. Because I, for one, am really excited too. Because I've been listening to your music nonstop. Well, thank hey, you. Appreciate you. So, for all of the CFRE listeners who are just now hearing of you guys who want to learn more where can we follow you where can we find you a good place to to start would be our spotify if you if you dig any of those tracks you can follow us on instagram for some for some updates on upcoming songs if you want to talk to us literally ask us questions and we'll answer right back then you can join our discord server uh, where all of the Ivy's um, are connecting uh, with each other. There. You made a fan base name. Yeah. Let's go. <laughs> and together, the, uh, the link tree in our Instagram bio has all those. Mm -hmm. yeah. So spot. that is at Ivy Tide on all social media platforms. Yeah. I yeah, it is I decide on all social media. Yeah, yeah. Okay, once again, this is Dana from CFRE Radio here with Ivy Tide. You see me run, I'm stunting. You know I don't want another. Keep us apart, why don't you?